Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to give you our power rankings for the Southeastern Conference. So let's get into it, Bob. Wherever you listen throughout the world, it's football time in Tennessee. Uh, look for these each week. We're going to fish. Seems like it's something y'all like. We may try to do this every single week. And uh, hopefully some opposing fan bases can give us their opinion of what, of what we're doing here and how they how they feel about these rankings. Uh, let's start off with Vandy at number 14. Uh, I think Vandy is a little better than what they have typically been in the past, but it's hard to put anybody else at that bottom spot, Tim. Well, you know, they've earned their cellar grower status over 50 years. And who are we to take it away from them just because they won two games last year? Let's see what you got this year, Vandy. Yeah, 47 to 13 over Alabama AM, but a uh, little bit misleading score. They didn't put those points on uh, 35 points in the second half. So, uh, and we'll see. That wouldn't be uh, really thrilled with that if I was a Vandy fan. But uh, I wouldn't be thrilled with a lot of things if I was a Vandy fan. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, all four of them. Uh, but uh, number 13 is the Gators. All right, Gators. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you right now, I think the Gators have the talent not to be anywhere near the 13th best team in this conference. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, I mean, I, I've shed some crocodile tears just earlier, was wiping them away for the Gators. Uh, but, you know, in all honesty, man, they, they looked bad against Utah. They did. Utah was on their third string quarterback, had eight other starters out for that game. Um, or who got put out early in the game. So uh, if you've got that many time, many players and your third string quarterback in there, you, that game should be competitive. But it really wasn't. Um, Gators did not look good on the offensive line. Struggled running the ball. Uh, struggled protecting the passer. And a passer that's not very mobile. I have a feeling he's not going to make it through the season. So uh, I really hate that they're doing. So bad. <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. But uh, don't uh, don't fire Sunbelt Billy, please. Uh, I think you're going to turn around uh, University of Florida. Uh, give him about five years. Yeah, maybe. minimal. Yeah, let's, let's try to keep him in there. Well, I'll tell you, uh, before we move on to the next one, let me just say that, you know, the Gators did play a good uh, opponent. Yeah. Something that almost every other team in this conference did not do. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to put the Gators down low because they had the big L. Uh, but we would, probably wouldn't have stuck them down that far if they didn't look so bad on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. uh, and that goes true to our next team also, South Carolina. Yeah, another team that uh, it bothers me to have them at that spot. Uh, number 12 spot, they uh, looked really bad on the offensive and defensive line. Uh, Mac Brown... If you've seen the picture, yeah. yeah. That's hard on live TV, choking the chicken. Choking the chicken. Uh, and uh, they they throttled South Carolina pretty bad. Uh, I will say uh, Spencer Rattler looked good, but uh, can he stay healthy behind that offensive line? North Carolina had nine sacks, only had nine is a huge number, by the way. They only had 17 last year. Yeah, for the entire year, 17 sacks. I don't think they've added Lawrence Taylor back to the team in one year. No. Um, didn't run the ball very well and uh, didn't uh, play very well on the defensive line either. They do have two outstanding wide receivers on legit and uh, Wells. But, uh, you know, it's all about giving that quarterback time to throw it to them. Yeah. It's a line of scrimmage lead still. And right now they look like they have major issues on both that may or may not be fixable. Mm -hmm. um, I will say on the offensive line, Bill, it seems most of their problems with their tackles. Mm -hmm. But their interior line didn't create no push in the running game either. So uh, if that's the best you can say, that's that's a problem. Uh, hen spot, we're tied. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Missouri. Uh, they, uh, they played uh, South Dakota, won 35 to 10. Uh, yeah, Missouri's got a good defense, but a lot of question marks about their offense, and a lot of the people, their fans, 
really wasn't thrilled with their week one performance. Um, you know, we really don't know where they're at on this until uh, until they play a little bit better conference. Well, that, yeah, and that's true for most of these teams today, but Missouri, I, I feel good about their defense. I think they've got an upper-level Southeastern Conference defense. Uh, the big question marks is, let's see what their offense do. Let's see what Cook does at the quarterback position. And uh, we'll know in a few weeks. We're going to see the major changes in these power rankings. Absolutely, yeah. Over the next two to three weeks, when people actually start playing people, uh, somebody tougher than their own um, spring scrimmage game, to be mm-hmm. quite honest about it. Uh, the next team is Mississippi State. Uh, played a pretty good team. I mean, a pretty good game, I mean. Not a pretty good team at all. <laughs> uh, they played uh, Southeastern Louisiana, 148-7. Uh, passed the ball really uh, well and ran the ball really well. Uh, I still question whether or not that team is going to be very good without Leach. Uh, they have changed in their scheme a little bit. They hired within, but they went to more of a vertical passing game instead of the uh, Leach horizontal passing game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I'm just not really confident that that team's going to be much better than 9 or 10 in the rankings as the season goes on. I tend to agree with you on that, Bob. They uh, replaced a lot of coaches, considering uh, you know they they stayed within. Mm-hmm. But we'll we'll see how they they they're, they're a team that I'm will be keeping my eye on as the season goes to get a better idea of what Mississippi State has. And that leads us to number nine team, Auburn Tigers, the Fighting Christians down on the plains. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting team. Um, you know, Hugh Freeze. You know, he said he made them look pretty good Saturday. I mean, they, I was kind of surprised by how well they played. Is it a little smoke and mirrors by playing a, a not a very good team in Massachusetts, uh, winning 49 to 14? That's a, a team that I'm not sure where they're going to be at in this ranking as it goes on. That they could be much lower and they could move up to three spots. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't really tell. I mean, you know, Massachusetts hasn't had a good defense since the Minutemen ran out at Lexington and Concord. So, you know, we'll, we'll see about them. Um, I think Auburn's a team that could possibly potentially slide way down this list. It's just so hard to pull in so many portal players. You just don't know. You just don't know. Um, number eight team is Kentucky. Um you know, they played uh, Ball State, 144-14. to 14. Uh, You know, I'm not sure how good that team was. It, um, If you just look at the score, it looked like they'd done pretty decent. But that game was pretty tight. Uh, they had a scoop and score, fumble, when the game was tight. And then had another fumble on the next possession. Seemed like bust that game open a little had bit. Had a special teams touchdown. Uh, they, uh, defense looked pretty decent. Running game looked good. Yeah, but they've got some injuries on the offensive line, too. And I think that's what's going to really tell the story of Kentucky. They they took a step back a year, a year ago on the offensive line and the line under Stoops to last year. And they went into the portal this year, and they've got a lot of players just for their offensive line. But they've already had some injuries in camp, had another injury the other day that's going to cost one of their best players to uh, miss a few weeks. Mm-hmm. It's still to be determined how many. But... I think Kentucky's a team that could slide up a little stronger in this list. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they could get up in that six range, possibly. Or if they don't get them off the line issues worked out a little bit quick. Down that 10 range. to drop down yeah. in 11 range as well. Our number seven ranked team is Arkansas. They uh, won 56-13 to 13 against Western Carolina. And uh, K.J. Jefferson is what leads this team. If he can stay healthy, they can uh, be a pretty good team, a team that most teams are not going to want to play. Yeah, solid. I would consider if KJ's healthy and Rocket Sanders plays a lot better than he did Saturday, this is a you know a good quality top 25 team. I would be concerned if I'm an Arkansas fan, though. Uh, Sanders, one of the best running backs in the league, only averaged 2.8 yards uh, carry against Western Carolina. That's, uh, that would bother me. Yeah, but I, I didn't get to see the game, so I couldn't tell you exactly what the issue was on that. 
I don't want to jump to no huge conclusions here after one week, but you know, it made you stand up and pay attention. Yeah, I'd be a little concerned myself if I was him on that. But one game, who knows? You know. Uh, the next game, next team is LSU. Well, they, you know, they lost to Florida State, which is no shame in that. Mm -hmm. That was an extremely tight game for about three quarters. Uh, back and forth, they might could have won it. But the fourth quarter come over up, and I'll just tell you, Bob, they got pushed around. Yeah, I, I, you know, it, it's almost sort of like they was intimidated. It's kind of weird, but uh, maybe they just got gassed. I, I don't know. Could be. But Florida State started playing bully ball, mm -hmm. and LSU couldn't do a thing about it. Yeah, I'm not sure that an uh, offensive line is where they thought it was going into the season. They thought it might be a strength. Looks kind of, looked kind of average um, against Florida State, which then again, Florida State has a pretty good defensive line. But Yeah, that's, Florida State's defensive line is going to make a few teams look average. Uh, Jared Burris on one, one side, he's not the only stud they got on that team. But Daniel didn't really impress me that much either, so I'm not sure where this team's going to be at. They, they've got plenty of talent. You know, so those are that's why you can't really even with a loss, you can't slide them down below six. Yeah, loads of talent there. So, you know, we'll see what happens with them. They can move up some. Uh, a lot of people had them possibly win in the conference. So we'll see. Uh number five is kind of a surprise team at this point is Ole Miss. You know, they played a uh, a very weak team. But they looked very good beating that weak team. Yeah, I believe uh, they had no mercy on Mercer. I believe it was. Yeah, seventy-three to seven. I mean, that's a that's a whipping. They looked good running the ball. They looked good throwing the ball. Uh, just overall, they looked really good. Well, if I had one word to describe them, it'd be good. Yeah, yeah I, I'm saying good. Yeah. No, I mean, Ole Miss. The thing about teams like Ole Miss is I always question how much what they look like over the entirety of their 85 uh, scholarship roster because a lot of times they may be good in the top and then they have gaps or nothing in the back line. Mm -hmm. But they're very happy uh, there with the depth. They actually consider that one of their team strengths. So, you know, that, that, that by itself has given me reason to watch for Ole Miss this year. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what they do. Mm -hmm. Number four team is Texas A&M. They, um, they played um, New Mexico, won 52 to 10. They are very happy with their quarterback and their wide receivers, and it looks like maybe the Bobby Petrino experiment may be working out week, in week one. It, they look pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, I always thought if, if they have a explosion between the two coaches, it won't happen week one anyway. But a &M mm -hmm. has the talent on ball par with almost any team in the country. Mm -hmm. They're probably a top five to seven talent team in the entire nation. Um, they so young last year, the injuries, they had Jimbo, it all worked against them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, Walter Nolan, Tennessee kid, uh, he come alive against uh, New Mexico, which you know I don't like, but that's good for them. I mean, yeah, he had seven tackles um, and a defensive you know, lineman position. That's pretty impressive. They've got a lot of really young defensive linemen. If they come into their own, and I, and I think that's the reason why so many people think that they may be pretty good this year. They're they're very talented and was very young last year, so. We'll see what, what they do going forward. But week one, they look good. That leads us into America's team, the Tennessee Volunteers. Right. I think they've earned that spot at this point. Uh, they were the only team that played a Power 5 team and won in the conference this week, even though ours was not. Only the other guys. Other guys. No, it, it wasn't. But I thought we looked pretty good. And... Um, you know, I think we deserve that spot right at the moment. I'd like to see us move up to two or one in the next two or three weeks. We'll see. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, but uh, we've got the team to do it. Uh, 
going into that two and one spot, there's the thing. Who's the two, who's the one? Gonna go with Bama at number two right now. Uh, they looked very good. Uh, there were some questions going into the week one, and I questioned them quite a bit about the quarterback when they went out and got to take the uh, transfer from Notre Dame. But uh, Milrose wanted to end up starting. Looked pretty good. Uh, they throw the ball quite a bit. And uh, week one, they look like they have some answers there. But let's see what they do when yeah. they play a little bit better competition. Yeah, they can just sit back there and throw it uh, against the people they're playing right now. Yeah, Middle Tennessee. Yeah. You can't expect them to, to win big 56-7 to seven and against Middle Tennessee. But they're going to play bully ball this year. I know they didn't really run the ball very well over the weekend. But, man, they got three starters on that offensive line that's over 350 pounds. They're just going leaning on some people throughout the course of this year and just beat you down. And then there's, look, if there's a, talent, a team in the country with more talent than Alabama, you're probably going to go to Sunday to find them. Yeah, if there is really one other one, it'll be the next team, and that's Georgia. Yeah, the, uh, unfortunately, the back-to-back -back champion, we probably have to put them at number one right now. Uh, they did not play very good uh, Saturday. They only went in 48-7 to against UT Martin, not a team that I would have thought they would have won by 50, 60 points at the minimum. But uh, one game. Uh, yeah. oh, season openers, come on. You know, I mean, we say that about almost every team this week. It really was. I mean, several of them have shown weaknesses. But I'm guessing in the next week or two, some old spots are going to get better, and some of them is going to show even more weaknesses when they actually play somebody decent. So it's really hard to learn a whole lot about this week one. Now, this is one of the weakest uh, schedules for the South Asian Conference that I can recall. We've learned less probably in the first week than as far back as I can remember. But over the next two or three weeks, we're going to learn a lot more of what Tennessee has in front of them and these uh, things. And, We'll see a lot of movement in this pair of rankings, Bob. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I expect it to be uh, quite a bit different even next week. Yeah. So uh, two things. Uh, please hit that like, subscribe button for us. But mainly, let's give us your comments. If you're from an opposing fan base or a Tennessee ball, either one, give us your pair of rankings coming off the first week of the season. Yeah, I'd love to hear other people's opinion. Uh, and sometimes... You know, it might change mine a little bit. It, it's pretty interesting to see what the, the other people's thought process. Oh, absolutely. Well, till next episode, go Big Orange. Go Vols.